So Pete, this is the third session of the prayer course. And today we're gonna to be talking about petitionary prayer. Last time we talked about adoration, and we also kind of talked about that struggle that we have sometimes where we feel like when we pray, we're just bringing God our wish list. Right, well, that is what we're looking at today. Because the most basic instinctive form of prayer is just asking God for stuff or for help. Right. Sometimes people say to me though, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to ask God for stuff and tell God stuff when he's God? So he knows it all already and presumably if he's loving, he's just gonna do whatever is necessary. And I've always loved that story of blind Bartimaeus in the Bible. And do you remember Jesus is passing through Jericho? He cries out, have mercy on me. He gets his way through the crowd. He gets to Jesus and Jesus looks at him and says, so what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> Like the entire crowd is going, duh, like, he's blind, on, Bartimaeus. Jesus. And B Bartimaeus says, I, Master, I want to see. And Jesus goes, oh, like he didn't know. Oh, okay, and heals him. What's going on there? Why does Jesus do that? I think what's going on is that although God knows our need, he does still want us to articulate it to him. And that's what we do in petitionary prayer. And I guess the amazing thing right about that prayer is that um, it works. Right? right? In the end, he's able to see. I think it's, it's easier for us to believe that when we pray, that can have an impact on things that maybe are happening inside of us, like in our hearts. But it's harder to believe that, that our prayers can have an impact on what happens kind of like out here. Like, do you think we can still expect things like that to happen today? I do, definitely. In the words of the soul band Hot Chocolate, I believe in miracles. Before they continue, less helpfully, since you came along, you sexy thing. <laughs> um, but no, I, I do believe that God changes things when we pray. There's stuff that happens when we pray that wouldn't if we didn't. And survey after survey shows that not only most people in our culture pray, but most people believe in the power of prayer. Mm. And over the last 20 or more years of 24-7 prayer, um, we have seen incredible answers to prayer. My email inbox is amazing because People are praying all the time, and so we're always experiencing miracles. And if you talk to any group of Christians anywhere in the world, they will all have their own stories of how God answered their prayers, personal testimonies. And that, that's in line with what Jesus promised. He said, if you ask anything in my name, it'll be done for you. Mm. What does that phrase, like, in the name of Jesus, what does, what does that actually mean? Right. So to pray in the name of Jesus means to pray in line with his character and his purpose. So he's not promising here to do stuff that contradicts his character or contravenes his purposes. But when we use our wills to say yes to God's will, miracles occur. It's like, um, I've got some friends called Robbie and Holly and they went off on a honeymoon and it was just a disaster. Uh, they arrived at the airport, there wasn't a shuttle to their hotel, the hotel was on the other side of the island, they spent all their savings on getting a taxi to the hotel. I mean, it's not the, the dream start. Not at all. <laughs> They've been wanting. And so they tried complaining to the manager of the hotel and he was just frankly rude. But then Robbie's mum, who is a, a, a force of nature, heard what was going on and she used LinkedIn to find out the owner of the holiday company. Wow. So the boss of the boss of the boss yeah. and emailed him. And within 24 hours, Robbie and Holly had a complete refund. Nice. And it's the power of going to the top. Mm. And really that's what praying in the name of Jesus is. We are going to the Father. We're going to God Almighty with Jesus. And so that's the most powerful way to pray. Mm. Let's look, shall we, at uh, what Jesus himself says about prayer in Matthew chapter 7, because this really is all about petition. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened. And I'm told that the, the Greek here is the continuous present tense. So that means literally it's like ask and keep on asking mm. and you'll get. Uh, seek, keep on seeking, you'll find knock and keep on knocking and the door will be opened. So this is Jesus saying that, you know, we've, we've got to be, we've got to persevere and we're going to look at that more in a little bit. 
Let's keep reading. Verse 9. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So uh, Jesus is telling us here explicitly that the Father loves to give good gifts to his kids and that we should ask. As simple as that. Mm. So this makes me think of my dad, right? Because when I was a kid, my dad would take me to buy Barbie clothes because that's what I loved and he loved me and he just wanted to bless me. Exactly. Maybe it really is a bit simpler than we sometimes make it. I think Jesus is just saying, look, God is your Father in heaven. He loves you. You're his kids. He wants to bless you. Ask him for the stuff that you want as well as the stuff that you need. And this is really important because it actually gets right to the heart of Jesus' message. See, the start of the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Jesus was really taking a pre-existing prayer that was around at that time in rabbinic circles called the Kaddish. And uh, it's pretty much word for word this prayer they would have been familiar with. But then he adds on this distinctive Mm. bit with this line, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins. And so the distinctive voice of Jesus is personal and it's relational. He's saying the Father wants to help you with your problems. He wants to forgive you your sins. He wants to provide you with your daily bread. So yes, it's completely right to ask God, not just for our necessities, but sometimes for our uh, our luxuries. Just don't expect God to always provide them. This is daily bread we're asking for, and and, um, you can't necessarily expect Nutella on it every time. (laughs) Okay, okay, I get that. But I think there's going to be some people that are watching this who have some serious prayer requests, right? right. This, isn't, this isn't all about Barbie dolls or Barbie clothes. Um, I think there's going to be people as well that are kind of sitting in this place of heartbreak because their prayers haven't been answered. I, there are times when it just feels like the way that God answers prayer is, is kind of arbitrary, right? Like he answers some prayers, he doesn't answer some, and, and the ones that are unanswered are ones that, that really matter to us. Yeah, that is such an important question. And in fact, it's so important that we dedicate a whole session to, to, to thinking about unanswered prayer. But let's just, let's just think initially about it now, because th- this is really personal for all of us. For me, many people will know that, that my wife, Sammy, has been incredibly sick. She still struggles with a chronic illness. And so it's not cheap. It's not easy to say, oh, well, you know, God's your father and he'll just do anything you pray. I wrestle with this myself. And one of the ways I often think about it is the, the, the old metaphor of a, of, a, of a traffic light. Sometimes when we pray, we just get a, a, a green light. It's a yes, it's a miracle very quickly. Sometimes we all know that it can be an amber light. It's like God saying, wait and persevere. It's one of these. And then sometimes it is a red light. And for reasons we don't always understand, God seems to be saying no. And that can be agonizingly painful. And there's loads of things I'd love to say at this point, but the one thing I think I need to say right now for people watching this who maybe feel like they've hit a red light and know from God with something they're praying about, a health issue or um, guidance in some area or financial problems, these are the times that you really need to hold on to God's love. Mm. It's more important than ever before. Don't give up on God's love. Don't don't doubt God's love when your prayers aren't working. One of the stories I tell in the book is about when Sammy, my wife, was particularly sick and I'd become primary carer for our two very little boys. One was really just a baby. Mm. And I was struggling. I was finding life incredibly uh, difficult. And then on top of everything else, Danny got chicken pox. So he's oh, no. covered, his little baby body was covered in those itchy pink spots and he wasn't sleeping and he was screaming. And I, I, everything in me wanted to explain to him, this isn't what being human feels like. Like, you're going to get better. Mm. And some of my friends had even said, uh, you get immunity in later life if you have chicken pox. I don't know if that's right or not. But 
I, I couldn't explain immunity to him. I couldn't explain anything. He couldn't understand English. He, he, his brain wasn't developed enough. But I could hold him. Mm. You know, I, I could pace up and down the landing, just, just rocking him to sleep. And I think sometimes we will go through things in life that we just don't understand. We, maybe we can't understand. And we'll hurt like hell. Those are the times we can let our Father hold us and love us and comfort us because it is possible to trust even that which we do not understand. Mm. That's what Danny was doing. And so if you're going through a red light experience, a, a, a painful unanswered prayer, those are not the times to push God's love away. Those are the times to lean into God's love, even though you don't understand what possible purpose he could have in not answering your prayer. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to ask my favorite question. How do we do that practically? The practical question. Very good. Well, first of all, pray with other people. Uh, in Matthew 18, 19, Jesus says there's a particular power when we come into agreement with other people. So why wouldn't you do that? Right. Secondly, learn to pray incrementally. Don't try and pray to the top of the staircase all in one go all the time. What's the next step? What's the next little prayer that you can pray towards the big prayer? So if, say, you, you're praying for a friend to become a Christian, don't just pray that over and over and again, but maybe pray that next time you see them, there'll be an appropriate opportunity to talk to them about your faith. Mm. Or for me, um, praying for Sammy to be healed. Obviously, there are times that I'm going to pray that really big prayer. But I might just pray that the, the next doctor's appointment will be really great and helpful and progressive. So learn to pray one step at a time, incrementally. Thirdly, learn to pray God's promises. Uh, I'm really challenged in, in that story, the Bartimaeus one, yeah. that, that, that Jesus says, what do you want me to do? And in my own life, there was a time where I really felt, felt like God was saying to me, Pete, you're praying these vague prayers, like for our own kids, for example, our own sons bless them at school, help them not to grow up and become Satanists or whatever, you know. <laughs> I felt like Jesus was going, yeah, but w what do you actually want me to, to do for you? And I've worked out that when God asks you a question, it's not because he needs the answer. So I asked him the question, but I'm like, okay, well, what do you want to do in my son's lives? And I spent a bit of time with the Bible, looked at a number of promises uh, in the Bible, and there were certain ones that jumped out at me. They resonated. I thought, yes, that's everything I long for for my, my boys' lives. That, that kind of connects with the type of people that they are. And so I bagged them. I wrote them down. I memorized them. And I learned to begin to pray those specific promises. And one of them was, it says of Jesus, he grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with mm. God and man. And I began to pray specifically, let them grow in wisdom at school today and, uh, uh, and you know, like learning math and whatever, but let them also grow in spiritual wisdom, let them grow in spiritual mm. authority, but also uh, like authority, stature with their teachers and all that stuff. So I began to pray a lot more practically. The promises of God give us like uh, tr train tracks to know like how to pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So pray with others, pray incrementally, pray the promise of God, and finally pray consistently about things. Uh, we're not really good at this, are we? But don't just pray once or twice. Keep, keep stacking dominoes. That's what these dominoes are here for. Sometimes, you know, because Jesus told stories to say that we must always pray and not give up. And maybe you could paraphrase it. He was saying, keep, like, praying the same prayer you've prayed again, like another domino just goes up. And then one day you pray that prayer you've prayed a million times before, yeah. the whole lot comes down. And it's not because you just suddenly got the right technique, it's because you didn't give up praying one prayer too soon. So should we try this? Let's do it. Here we go. So sometimes it's like that. You just keep stacking dominoes, you keep praying the same prayers, and eventually you get the breakthrough that you've been looking for. There's a lovely story about Queen Bertha of Kent, way back in the sixth century here in England. 
She was a Christian, but her husband wasn't. He was a pagan king, often the way that the wife gets saved first. And being a nice kind of a husband, he decided to build a chapel, uh, a prayer room for his wife so she'd go off and do her church stuff. <laughs> and she went to this prayer room every single day. And what she did in there was she prayed for her husband to come to know Jesus, for Ethelbert to get saved. It took 17 years praying in that chapel wow. until God dramatically answered her prayers. Because in 597 AD, a bunch of monks from Rome came to England and they preached the gospel. And not only did Ethelbert finally get saved through their mission, but out of that part of England, a massive mission was launched throughout the country and thousands turned to Christ. Wow. And the reason that Canterbury Cathedral was built by one of those monks on Ethelbert's land is because that is where his wife had been praying all those years. The heart of Anglicanism around the world to this day goes back to a wife who prayed for her husband. She kept stacking dominoes. See, Bertha, I suppose, thought she was just praying for her husband. But in fact, she was praying for a nation and for generations to come. It took 17 years of praying, but we are still feeling the consequences 1,400 years later. So sometimes we're stacking dominoes for years, and sometimes it's just months or weeks or days. I remember um, when I started praying that way for our kids about them growing in wisdom, stature and favour with yeah. God, um, it was only two weeks of stacking dominoes because something really amazing happened. One of our sons sat bolt upright in bed at night, called for us, we ran upstairs, and he greeted us with the words, I need God, I want to pray that prayer thing. Wow. And I got to kneel down by his bed with my son as he gave his life to the Lord, which really as a parent is kind of everything that you long for actually. But it gets more remarkable really because then the next day, his aunt, my sister-in-law phoned up and she said, what happened with him the night before? Because I had a dream about him last night. So I'm like super interested right. at this point. <laughs> and she goes, okay, in the dream there's a stranger in your house think it was an angel. He invited you and Sammy into your study and said, this particular son has been noticed in heaven. Those, wow. That's the phrase. And I've been sent to tell you how to raise him. So two weeks after beginning to pray that he would grow wisdom, stature and favour with God and man, he gives his life to God, which is a pretty dramatic answer to that prayer. His aunt has a dream that night, knowing nothing about it, never had a dream for him like that before or since. In the dream, an angelic visitor paraphrases the very prayer that I'm praying and says, yes, he, he, your prayer has been heard. He's been noticed in heaven. So sometimes it is amazing how God answers and it's quick and it's dramatic. And sometimes it's years of stacking dominoes. And maybe it's because we're praying for something bigger than we even realize. Yeah. Wow, Pete, thank you, thank you so much. We've really covered a lot of ground today. I feel like I'm a lot clearer about why we actually need to ask God for stuff as we right. pray, and about what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. I love what you said um, about when your son had chicken pox and about trusting even when we don't understand. And of course, the traffic light thing. And when we don't get that green light, we need to pray the promises of God. And we definitely need to keep stacking those Keep dominoes. stacking dominoes, yep. So why don't we pray? Let's pray. Father, give us today our daily bread. God, I, I just pray as we pray with each other in our groups about our needs, God, that you would hear our prayers, God, that you would answer them. And Lord, we just pray for, for anybody that's watching right now, God, who's struggling with unanswered prayer. Lord, I pray that you would give us the strength to persevere, Lord. And uh, yeah, God, that you would help us to just keep stacking our dominoes, God. Keep, keep asking. We trust you, God. Lord, teach us to pray. 